Mrs. Burke caught my father. The door opened. Come in, Mr. Bally said, said Mrs. Burke in a kind and cheerful voice. My father came in. In one hand he was carrying a large fish, in the other a bundle of firewood. It was clear that he had drunk much. His cap was on the side of his head. He took two or three steps into the room and then stopped. He looked around him in great surprise. So he was standing for some time there in the middle of the room with the fish and the firewood in his hands and looking first at me, then at the baby on the bed, at the toast and cups and spoons on the table. Then, with tears in his eyes, he sat down on a chair. He dropped the fish and the firewood on the floor and covered his eyes with his hands. You are not well, James Bally said, said Mrs. Burke. The troubles of the day have been too much for you, poor man. No, no, it isn't that, said my father. It's what I thought when I was going home. It's all over, I said to myself. Nobody is waiting for you. Now if you want some fish, I said, you must bite yourself, and firewood too, if you want to cook it. I thought all this, continued my father, and came home. And what did I find? I found everything as if nothing had happened, even better. And then he began to cry. Oh, Mr. Bell is sad, said Mrs. Burke, as if she had not heard my father's words. Do you want anything else? Shall I pour out your tea and then go to my room and cook the fish for you? No, thank you, ma'am, said my father. I want nothing else. Well, then I'll go, said Mrs. Burke. Please, sit down and drink a cup of tea with us, Kitty, said my father. Mrs. Burke agreed and sat down. Do you like your tea sweet, Mr. Bally said. Move nearer to the fire, you will feel better. Then she turned to me. Jimmy, she said, don't you know your duty to your father? Unlace his boots and bring him his slippers. Slippers? laughed my father. What are you talking about? Anybody who hears you will think that you don't know me and take me for a gentleman. You have no slippers? Mrs. Burke looked very much surprised. She quickly went into her room and soon returned with a pair of slippers. They belong to my husband, she said. They're a little cold. I'll warm them. She went down on her knees in front of the fire and warmed the slippers. Then she put them on my father's feet herself. You are a remarkable woman, said my father. You must be very tired. You were taking care of two children the whole afternoon and found time to clean the room and make it so beautiful. It is not work but a pleasure to take care of children, replied Mrs. Burke. And it was not difficult to clean the room. But I'm sure it took a lot of time, said my father. Oh no, Mr. Bally said, it didn't take a lot of time. Judge for yourself. Here are the sacks which I found time to make while I was here today. What? You cleaned the room and made all these sacks? exclaimed my father. You took care of two children and cleaned the room in one afternoon. Well, you are a remarkable woman. And I did not hurry, replied Mrs. Burke, laughing. It isn't work that frightens Kitty Burke. This was not the truth. She had not made all these sacks that afternoon. She had brought three ready-made sacks, and she had made only one and part of another. And I said, What a storyteller you are, Mrs. Burke! I saw that she was in a rage. What's that? asked my father. Who is a storyteller? His hand moved to his belt, and I was afraid to open my mouth. Oh, don't be angry with him, James, said Mrs. Burke. He means that I was telling him pretty stories to keep him awake while we were waiting for you. That's why he calls me a storyteller. Oh! And I thought he wanted to say that you had not made these four sacks, said my father. Oh, no, said Mrs. Burke. Then she turned to me and said, See, Jimmy, dear, here are four sacks. 
Tell your daddy how many I made while you were sitting and watching me. What could I do? I saw that my father was more ready to believe her than me. I was afraid of his belt. Four, ma'am, I answered. Of course, said Mrs. Burke quietly, and gave me a spoonful of sugar. Mrs. Burke stood up, took the baby off the bed, and carried it into her room. Then she returned to take the cups. What time must you get up in the morning, Mr. Bally said, she asked. What time, ma'am? At half past four, as usual. Why? Because I'll make you breakfast, she said. Early in the morning, when it was still quite dark, I heard her knock at the door. It's half past four, Mr. Bally said, and the kettle is boiling, and there is a nice hot piece of fish for you. I heard my father say in surprise, Well, I have never seen such a woman.